what has been called a sign stealing scandal and an advanced scouting, you know, tool where it's like, you know, it gives the, it gives Michigan an, an unfair advantage. I'm not going to lie to you guys. The first, when I first heard about this and, and the topic was sign stealing, I almost chuckled because I mean, let's be honest, guys, like if you play, if you played sports as long, um, long enough, if you may, if you were fortunate enough to play at the college level, you know that signs are always going to get stolen, cars are going to get going to get picked up in film. That's why we have scouting reports, and that's why we have film. The film is literally designed so we can learn what their hand signals are or what their calls can be, so we can figure out how to defend it. And plenty of teams across all of college sports to do this because they want they have to prepare in order to you know know what kind of defense to blow to do to counteract their offense same thing with the offense the offense has to know what what the defensive calls are so they can run the right plays in order to counteract that but and i didn't i didn't think that Harb, i didn't think anything would come of this to be honest i thought it was just a load of garbage and an investigation that would continue on throughout the entire season until the college football season was over well to my shock a few hours ago the Big Ten decided to step in and suspend Jim Harbaugh for what looks like the remainder of the regular season. And who knows what else can come of this. There's been a lot of talk about this guy, Connor Stallions, who allegedly looks like he went to a Central Michigan game, uh, posed as a member of the staff, and was able to get on the sideline. And I'm like, how the hell does this guy manage to sneak onto a campus, into another locker room, and on the field with another team? Because they, because I'm sure that field passes are checked extensively, IDs are checked extensively to make sure that something like that doesn't happen. So, I'm mind boggled about how this guy even got on the sidelines. First of all, but I mean, I look at Michigan's schedule here, and I just think about why would they need to steal signs to win games? I mean, look at the schedule here. Open up the season against East Carolina, thirty to three. Next game. UNLV 35 to 7. This is without Jim Harbaugh in these first three games. This is without Jim Harbaugh. Bowling Green, 31 to 6. Rutgers, 31 7. Nebraska, 45 to 7. Minnesota, 52 to 10. Indiana, 52 to 7. Michigan State, 49 to nothing. Purdue, 41 to 13. Purdue's come out and said a lot of things about Michigan, how they definitely like were stealing signs or whatever. I'm like, do, you, do we honestly think that any of these teams would have stood a chance against Michigan if they even were stealing signs or if they weren't? Do we honestly think that this would have changed the outcome of what this soft schedule is in Michigan? This weekend is their first real test. This is where the season actually gets started. We're in the latter parts of the, of the regular season. We've got three games left in the college football season for every team, guaranteed. And this is when Michigan's season actually gets started. They, they're on the road at Penn State, who is – has has a has still has a shot to get into that college football playoff, so they have a lot to play for. They, um, their season, I know they I know they blew a tough road game against Ohio State, but now you got Michigan, who's in that top four. Penn State could very much catapult themselves to have a much better chance of getting into that playoff if they pull out a win versus Michigan, and they're going in there without Jim Harbaugh. Now, I'm not sure what kind of an impact that really has on on, on a team because I've never experienced that in, in, in my collegiate days, but it's more about you know. So for me, it was like, well, we, if we're missing our best play, our best players, or whatever the case may be. That's a different story. Now the game plan changes, and other guys have to really step up. I'm not sure how that feels to not have your coach out there from start to finish. I've experienced I've experienced times where, like, you know, my coach got thrown out due to te- due to technical fouls, and the assistant had to step in. I've experienced that, but to go into a game not having your head coach, I mean, I'm sure it has an impact on just so far as routine and like what you're used to. We were used to seeing when a, when a play breaks down or when. You know the offense goes down, has a three and out, or has to punt the ball. You know you're looking at the sideline, you're expecting to see your head coach there. So I think it'll be a slight change in routine, but again, I can't really speak on it because one, I never played football, and two, I never really experienced that as a collegiate player. But I'm sure it has some kind of impact in, in terms of routine. But as far as the game, as far as the talent that's on this team, the assistants should be prepared to coach this team because they, they're around the guys every single day. They're around Jim Harbaugh every day. They know they know the same offensive calls. They know what Jim Harbaugh would expect of them, and you know assistant coaches. You know they're trying to be head coaches. So I'm thinking like they're prepared for this, if anything. So I don't know what kind of impact it's really going to really going to have. I guess we'll see like on Saturday, just how it's going to look because apparently Jim Harbaugh is allowed to coach during the week, 
but he's not allowed to coach in the games. Now, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, to be honest with you. If you're going to suspend the guy, then suspend the guy from the program. Then he, should, he shouldn't be around the team because why would you have a, the coach around to coach practice, but then you can't coach the games? But that's the NCAA. We know that they're backwards, and we know that they like to do things, you know, whatever they want to do because they like making up rules. I never imagined Michigan not being allowed to play in the college football playoff. I heard, I heard the great Stephen A. Smith talk about this. He thought that until Michigan has proven that nothing happened, they shouldn't be allowed to play in the college football playoff. I disagree with that wholeheartedly because we're punishing the players at this point. And I've always been against punishing the players for things that they had no knowledge of and for things that they didn't do. We go back to 10 years ago, Penn State. We know about that situation with Jerry Sandusky that in, in the fall of Joe Paterno and just everything that we knew Penn State football to be for so long. The bowl, they, they, issued, they issued a bowl ban uh, on, on the team. I'll never forget it because I was there. You know, bowl ban comes down on ESPN. Everyone's watching on campus. You know, people, people are in tears. People are like just absolutely in, in distraught. I see like a bunch of players that I've gotten to know just saying, just dabbing me up saying, Hey, it was good. It was good knowing you. I'm about to get up out of here. About to transfer. Like this is literally right after the bowl band. So it's like it's just an immediate like waterfall effect going going through the entire school. And I just thought it was just so like it was just so uncalled for and so unfair to punish the current players for something while extremely egregious. Jerry Sandusky belongs in jail where he is right now. It's egregious what happened to, um, that, that during those times. But to suspend the current players and to keep them from playing in bowl games. I thought it was just ridiculous. I thought it was. I thought it wasn't right. I thought the NCAA dropped the ball on this. I thought the board of board of trustees, whatever Penn State, had dropped the ball on this. You punish the people that are responsible. Don't punish the players who had nothing to do with this or had no knowledge of it. So this is. So this. It brings me back to that because we see what's going on with Michigan right now. We don't need to punish them for what Coach Harbaugh made, um, did or did. Made, did he know or did he not know? Who knows? But we can't punish the players for that, and we also can't you know, just eliminate the this, this season with the body of, body of work that they put together for, to put themselves in position for a college football playoff because of the actions of one Coach Harbaugh. I just don't, I just wholeheartedly disagree with that. Are we seeing the end of Jim Harbaugh in college football altogether? Is this like going to be, you know, the last, the last hurrah for him? There's been rumors that Jim Harbaugh wanted to leave last year. You know, I'm, I'm coaching at Michigan after that debacle they faced when they lost to TCU in the, in the playoff. That's neither here nor there, you know, looking back on it. But now it's resurfaced again with this scandal. I'd be shocked, to be honest with you, it wouldn't surprise me if Jim Harbaugh, you know, decided to take an NFL job. There's a couple there's a couple franchises that are in need of a big name, so to speak. But you, you also sit back and wonder, like, how much is Jim Harbaugh's name going to be scarred from this from this scandal? Now, because now you got two investigations going on with you in the same season. Now, Coach can bolt. He's proven that he can win. I mean, he's, he's, he's knocked off Ohio State, which is the number one thing that a coach is supposed to do at Michigan is to beat Ohio State. You've done that twice now by a very substantial margin. And, you, and you've gotten Michigan in position to win a national championship. You didn't, you didn't get the job done all the way, but you managed to get them within striking distance twice now. And they have a good chance of doing it again this year for the third straight year. Does Harbaugh take a look at what is in the NFL for him? I don't think it would surprise me at all. I mean, coaches, coaches will say the politically correct thing and say, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. But we all know money talks and situations change at the blink of an hour, like, like, like night and day. My, my, gut re, my gut reaction is I think he'll entertain it, but it'll ultimately end up going back to Michigan. But at the same time, I'm thinking, like, why would you want to go back to a potential landmine that you have, you have if you stay in Ann Arbor? If you go to the NFL, you essentially won't have to deal with all the all the investigations and what we what you've been found, quite frankly, been found guilty of. But again, if this is specifically just about sign stealing, I don't know all the details of everything that happened. I got to read the report a little bit more. But if this is specifically about sign stealing, come on, man. Like, you think that Michigan is the only school that goes to lengths to steal signs or steal calls? Or at least try to learn what they have. You're going to, you're going to the NFL. Spygate from the Patriots. Now, that was that was a lot. And then we have Deflate Gate. You know, Tom Brady with the deflated footballs. You know, the funniest part was that Brady said that he had no idea. That part was funny because, dude, you're the quarterback. You touch the football more than anybody else on the team other than the ball boys. You're telling me you didn't know anything? 
that's obviously in the past, but just looking back on it, I just thought that was funny, like, you know, as far as, like, scandals that, have, that we've seen recently in the football world. But for this one, it's just really puzzling to me. It's like, maybe just, there's a lot more that we're not being told as of yet. That for the reasoning for Harbaugh to be suspended this many games, it, I'm, I'm imagining it, there's more that we don't know. But just for the sake of sign stealing, I don't think it's really that serious. When you think about competitors, like, you have to change your signals all the time. Basketball, football, whatever you're playing, you're going to have to learn new – Coaches don't. Coaches put in new plays throughout throughout the year as you know the season wanes to keep defenses off off balance. And teams, it's 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 another. It's the other. It's the opposition's job to scout, and have tape on those new plays.